Medication reconciliation is a process by which we ensure that we have an accurate list of medications that a patient is taking before they're admitted to a facility. So we, we get the best possible medication history and ensure that there are no discrepancies between what the patient was using before they got there and what we order when they arrive. It involves, in our case, for long-term care, generally older people who uh, are vulnerable. Uh, many of them are not able to speak for themselves or don't have memory to recall exactly how medications are used and they're coming from some other level of care. So the purpose of medication reconciliation is to know exactly what people are taking and ensure that if we change those orders, we're doing it with intention. And uh, the, behind it, the overall goal of medication reconciliation is to reduce the potential for adverse drug events and the potential for patient harm. And I mean, I'm a registered nurse, so I know med errors happen, medication errors. I've made medication errors. To err is human. But they've, from all of the literature and the research, they said that medication errors is the number one error affecting patient safety today. And the statistics were quite alarmingly high. So that just brings it to the forefront immediately. If this is the number one error where we're making mistakes, and it does cause harm to, to patients and residents, then this should be our focus. As we were doing baseline at one of the facilities, uh, it came clear to us as we were going through the checks of the process that this person, when they came from hospital, for some reason their antidepressant was um, left off the list. We have no idea why, but it was inadvertent. And uh, so when the person was settling into the facility, instead of, um, instead of it being a smooth transition, she became very upset and um, really inconsolable and to the point that they actually had to bring in the uh, mental health team to help her settle in and when we did med reconciliation it became obvious that her antidepressant had missed in the transfer and it's really very sad that she had to go through that um, when we can just simply do a better check at the beginning. We had one situation where the patient's medication was uh, denepazil and it was on their admission uh, documentation it indicated 10 milligrams daily. We phoned that sending facility and they indicated to us that the patient had been reduced from 10 milligrams down to 5 due to side effects. The consequences of those side effects are a slowed heart rate, confusion, nausea and vomiting. Had we not picked this up the patient would have gone on to experience the same side effects that they had from the sending facility. So we avoided that harm in that case. Safer Healthcare Now is a national grassroots campaign. Uh, teams are supported in geographic areas called nodes, and so we have a support system of a node leader and a safety improvement advisor in each node that support teams by teaching them quality improvement principles, by helping them to get baseline data, and helping them to get started. The intervention lead in ISMP Canada at the Institute for Safe Medication Practices Canada that I work for act as the intervention lead for medication reconciliation. We host national teleconferences. We manage a website that gives people a lot of information and resources. ISMP Canada created the first Getting Started Kit and uh, recruited a faculty to support MedRec in acute care. And for the purposes of long-term care, what we did was we looked at the acute care kit, we modified it to meet the needs of long-term care, and we recruited three new faculty members from long-term care who had experience in long-term care. Then we were very fortunate because we sent the kit out to reviewers who are actually doing med rec in long-term care. So it's been reviewed by long-term care practitioners and modified to ensure that it meets the needs of long-term care. Using the quality improvement model in uh, Safer Healthcare Now is a fundamental, the fundamental basis of the campaign. And to use the quality improvement model, rather than issuing a policy or a procedure, what we suggest is that teams start small, focus on a particular uh, set of patients, and learn how to make the change to their system. So learn how to reconcile, get some data, measure the impact of your process change, and then gradually expand that by using small tests of change in order to uh, ensure that you know that what you're doing works. Well, the old way of doing things was to rely on the medication bottles that the patient brought in and we would take the instructions directly from those bottles. They're not always aware of any discrepancies that might exist between their medication bottles and what they're doing. They're just used to doing it a certain way. 
This is just a much more thorough um, check. We, we check different sources and we are taking more thorough best possible medication histories, like a medication history. And we need to do our part to make our residents safe. And that means checking where we need to check and being as thorough as we possibly can in providing that safety for our residents. Um, so it's not okay just to use one source now. We need to go further than that because the research shows us that these errors are happening and we need to fix that. Success will be when everyone coming into our facilities receives med reconciliation so that we know we're starting with the right medication list. All of the teams so far in long-term care have found unintentional discrepancies. If we change our systems, we have the potential of doing this right. We can erase unintentional discrepancies.